caution. This video is highly suggestive. We highly suggest you take this fishing information and explore your area to find the best fishing spots. Welcome to Head First Fishing. I'm Captain Joe Rains. I'm excited that you're here and I want to help you catch more fish. I'm going to be transferring a lot of information today. So if you're a beginner fisherman for salt water, this is really going to help you a lot. There's a lot of factors that go into what make a fishing spot good. And once you start to understand those factors, then you start to see things as they really are. No matter where you go, no matter where you travel, you'll start to identify fishy looking places. And once you understand what a fishy looking place is, that's gonna help you eliminate a lot of nonsense and time wasting. That's what I'm all about. I hate wasting time. I do like exploring and that is part of the process for sure. It's a lot of fun, but whenever possible, I'm trying to fast track myself to the best bite. So the point of this video is to help you get on the fish quick. Let's talk for a second about what makes a good fishing spot. So when I'm looking for a really good fishing spot, I'm looking for several different things coming together at once. I'm looking for really nice mangrove shorelines here on West Coast, Florida. I'm looking for water that can extend far up into the mangrove roots. I'm looking for nice seagrass beds with a variety of little contours and depth changes. I'm looking for some divots and potholes and maybe deeper holes that may go down to four or five feet nearby. Looking for little troughs along the shoreline, looking for shells accumulating on the bottom. Definitely oyster beds and mangrove islands up on oyster beds. That's really, really good. And I'm also looking for tiny little backwater creeks that wind way back into the mangroves, places you can just quite get a kayak or a little flats boat or something like that. Something you can just barely get way back in there. That's gonna hide a lot of fish. Believe it or not, some tiny little places like that can really have a pile of fish back in them. What does a bad fishing spot look like? Well. Oftentimes, it's a place where there's nothing really unique going on there. There's nothing for the fish to really relate to. It would probably be a place where fish may be at some point, but they're not going to be there for that long. They're not going to hold up there. Places that hold fish have reasons to be there. So a bad fishing spot would be a place where there's not much seagrass or there's not much oysters or shell bottom. Uh, there might not be much current. There might not be any mangroves or sawgrass, spartina grass for them to hide in. There may be uh, no little pockets and holes and, and, and dips in the bottom for them to sit in. Places that are kind of devoid of unique features tend to hold less fish when we're talking about inshore flats fishing. The best places usually have something that can give the food chain places to hide and utilize for ambush. Francois, cue the map. Okay, boss. Let's take a look at this awesome fishing spot. If you remember back in part one of how to find and catch more redfish, I told you to find the fishiest, most natural areas where you live. Well, this is a great example of a natural shoreline with tons of great features. The first reason I like it, plenty of good seagrass. Seagrass is the basis of the food chain. A lot of good seagrass out here. A lot of good little pockets and sand holes in the seagrass. A lot of good looking stuff right here. Number two, a lot of inlets and cuts into these backwaters back in here. There's another little cut probably right there where the fish can get back in. Fish can go all the way back in here. These back bayous are gonna hold a lot of fish. A lot of mole are gonna come back in here and congregate. This is going to let fish get in away from danger and also follow prey back in here so they can feed. Out here, this is the danger zone for a lot of redfish and snook. This is where dolphins are. This is where sharks. The dolphins are probably the number one threat because they're so smart. They'll come as shallow as they can and try to pin these fish and they'll snatch them up. It's, it's pretty impressive to watch them do it. So a lot of redfish and snook, they're staying shallower. They'll go in deeper water, that is for sure, but they're definitely trying to avoid being a snack for a dolphin. So as the water pushes up, they're going to explore more into these mangrove roots. They're going to push back into these bayous. 
The third reason I like this spot is the presence of oysters. You got a nice little oyster bar point there. You've got some oysters here, little oyster island there. Great looking spots for fish. Oysters attract a lot of different species of fish. I think if there's algae growth on the oysters, it attracts mullet. Mullet attract predators. There's also often little crabs around oyster bars. That's going to attract redfish. Oysters are also generally good for the habitat. They clean the water. It makes it a better place. Oyster bars are a form of cover or ambush point for predators like redfish. So redfish may post up right by an oyster bar and just wait for a school of mullet or some crabs to swim by, some silver perch, uh, some uh, bull minnows. They're going to sit there and wait for that type of stuff to come by the oyster bar and then they're going to jump on it. Often they'll just cruise around the oyster bar looking and looking and looking for food. The fourth reason I like this spot is the presence of these scarred potholes out here. These are going to be good places to look for redfish when the tide gets low. As the tide pulls out and these upper areas of the flat get too dry to hold fish, they're going to pull out here. And there's going to be a general contour that on average the fish are going to go to. So this is where you really need to do your homework. This is why I tell you to get out with intent and just look for redfish and do it on low tide. There's going to be a contour line out here on this flat. There's going to be a zone. It might be 50 yards wide, could be 100 yards wide. But there's going to be a zone on low tide on average where the fish are going to congregate. And in some instances, they're going to congregate and they're going to be on the edges of these little pockets out here. So you need to get out and look for these little pockets, these potholes, these scars, these little irregularities. You can see these small irregularities and depth changes that may constitute a couple of inches. Just a couple of inches of change will make the fish run a contour. It's very interesting, but you can definitely see it. Get out there and check that out on low tide. So let's jump back into how to fish this area. So our rule of thumb is high water, fish closer to the shore, fish further back into the mangroves, back in these bayous. I'm going to come in here if I can with my boat and stop right here in the middle and start chumming. I'm going to fish with white bait. If you're fishing with lures, start out here fan casting. If you don't get a response, move in closer. If I don't get a response chumming in here, I'm going to move into the shoreline, maybe right here and broadcast chum with sardines, live sardines, all throughout this little corner pocket right here. And from there, I'm just going to work, doesn't matter which way, a lot of good looking shoreline here. I'm going to work these little pockets, this semi-circle shoreline, that's a great spot back in here. Any interesting changes in the shoreline are going to be really good places for fish to hide. Fish love these places because they can get away from danger and there's a lot of food back here. Now, the tide's falling. I'm going to fish this for a while, but eventually I know I can't stay in here forever. I got to move. And if it gets shallow enough, the fish are going to move too. So if I'm in here and the tide is falling enough, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. And eh, maybe I fish my way out, but probably post up out here and wait for that tide to really start coming out of this little mouth here. It's going to start pulling out of here really hard. And when it does, you need to be ready to strike because there's going to be a lot of fish that were either back in here already or they were back here on the flats out here on the seagrass and they're going to move right in here and they're going to wait for the food to come to them. A lot of fish are going to be pulled out. A lot of bait fish are going to be pulled out of these backwaters and it just creates a funnel and it feeds them. They'll sit here and just chew, 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 chew. The fish will sit there and eat until they can't eat anymore. You can sit here on a good moving tide and just watch. Little minnows, little bait fish, little mullet, you know, bull minnows, mud minnows, crabs are going to flush out of here. And these snook and redfish are just going to gorge themselves. You can literally sit there and watch it happen without having to put any bait in the water yourself. Obviously, you're going to want to put some bait in the water. What would you think of that spot, buddy? That looks like a great spot. So as I've shown, these places have tons of features that fish are going to take advantage of. And in our area, there's going to be fish there most of the time. Probably the only times there's not going to be fish there is when either the tide has gotten so low they have to leave 
or we've had a big cold front and the water temperature has dropped a lot and they had to get out of there to find better water temperatures. Other than that, there's gonna be fish in these places all the time. They won't always be there in incredibly high numbers. It will vary, but in the right conditions, you can absolutely smack the fish in places like that. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Definitely check out more headfirst fishing videos for great fishing tips so you can become a better fisherman. Many thanks to our sponsors, St. Pete Fishing Outfitters, Tampa Fishing Outfitters, and Tarpon Fishing Outfitters, plus the Pike Consulting Group. Great companies. Francois, if they like the video, what should they do? Subscribe! Hey, you heard the man. Definitely hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button to be kept up with all our videos. At Pike Consulting Group, we're changing the culture of safety.